Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to green and clean beauty, and I'm back with another Get Ready With Me Q&A where I will answer all of the rest of your questions that you sent. Thank you so much for sending them again. I love, love getting them. I'm gonna put some green and clean beauty on my face, create this look, tell you everything that I use. Some of these items are new into the mix. You're gonna get some first impressions as well. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go. Heads up, if you're going from toxic to non-toxic and have no clue where to start, Check out my free green beauty guide back on the website. It's the one pager I wish I had when I first started out. In the meantime, don't forget to like this video and make sure you subscribe so you never miss another one. Yeah, hey, I'm back. Back again. This is steaming hot. I should probably wait, but... It's hot. So I'm going to pull up the questions ahead of time, um, and then I'm going to tell you what I've already put on La Fasse. Translation, the face. So what language it is. Doesn't really matter, does it? Nope. Questions are pulled up. The makeup is laid out. I have already done some prep. Started with the Jane Iredell Beauty Prep Hyaluronic Serum. And then I had the Beauty Prep Moisturizer over it. And then I know I'm insane, but I even put the 100% Pure Luminous Primer on top because I wanted a very smooth surface that was sort of lit a little bit. So I've done brows. I use Eye of Oris Brow Pencil. So let's get started. Oh wait, one more. Um, I use the 100% Pure Coffee Bean Caffeine Eye Cream. This I love for one specific reason, and, and that is when I apply a Lima Pure Concealer, sometimes it goes from a butter to dry finish, and sometimes I just need a little bit more moisture there, so that was one of the questions too, I'll get to that in a minute, but I like using this sometimes, and it does tighten, it firms a little bit. So you what is your fave liquid eyeliner? Do you know a good green beauty alternative to the Naked Palette? Okay. That's two questions and I appreciate you. First, while I answer those questions, I'm going to apply the, actually I'm gonna do concealer first. Put on the Alima Pure Cream Concealer in Echo. Girl, I need my mirror. Right, 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 right. Favorite liquid liner. I don't have one because I haven't liked any of the cleaner liquid liners that I've tried. I had a Dorn that I just reviewed. Going to try the Zuzu liquid liner. A lot of you have recommended that to me. So I will give that a shot. Tried a Jane Iredale liquid liner. That's kind of the sad little answer there. I'm still trying. Thank you so much for asking. Love you, I mean it, but I just, I'm, I'm right there with you, so. I will continue to test. And as far as an alternative for the Naked Palette, maybe I shouldn't have started with this question. Um, I don't know the Naked Palette. I mentioned this actually in my previous Q&A. I was never really beauty obsessed, so I wasn't really on top of the Sephora trends, and I, you know, wasn't necessarily a Rouge member, you know, all that stuff. So I'm not really familiar with the Naked Palette. I have a couple of palettes here, so I was thinking, maybe I just do my top three palettes? I think. Let me know. Moving on to the next question and the other eye. Well, actually, let me do the other eye and then I'll get to the next question. Okay, so the concealer is on. I'm gonna go in with the, this is new, the Alima Pure, it's a pressed powder foundation. I'll give you all the information in the description below. I'm so excited to try it. I have tried a couple of others and posted about this yesterday on Instagram. Why am I just now getting into a pressed powder foundation? Like, why is this, why is this just happening now? I don't know. I've been so into the liquid foundations, I've just sort of glanced right past these guys. So, oh, I'm gonna put that on and you guys can see what it does. And I'm gonna answer another question. A lot of people say green beauty is a scam. What would you say to them? It's not. I think what is, I feel like a lot of people felt this way about organic food and probably still do feel this way about organic food. I think everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, Lord knows people have them. I would probably say, here's how I would deal with the conversation. I would say, well, what led you to believe this is a scam? Uh, if they come at me with information, backed information, industry and scientific studies that are funded by like Procter and Gamble, then I'm open. If you don't have the facts, not open. And that's kind of the whole point of this channel, you know? I think what's really tricky out there, and I know a lot of brands are trying to figure this out, and a lot of retailers are trying to figure this out. See how good this foundation is, by the way? I love it. And it doesn't sit on top, it doesn't look cakey. The consumer is 
freaking confused. You say clean, you say green, you say natural. First of all, the vernacular is totally all over the place, but I think that also adds to the argument, like green beauty doesn't work or green beauty isn't as good as conventional. I've shown you over a hundred times here that it's just as good as a conventional beauty product, so that's out. It's not a scam. I think that sometimes we pay a little bit more for marketing. Sometimes we pay a little bit more for really high quality products, uh, but the same thing happens with conventional beauty. I mean, we pay for packaging, but I think right now we just have to police ourselves and just know that whenever you do something different, whenever you try something different and you want to change, it's going to weird people out. I also think for people who think this is a scam, why the word scam? Like, why would you think this is a scam? Who's trying to fool you? If anything, the whole point here is to be informed about what you're putting on your body and what you're putting in your body. I would think most human beings would want to know that information. Obviously, I'm getting passionate about it. That's kind of my flippy floppy answer to that question. I really liked that question. Thank you. What's nice is it sets so I don't have to put a setting powder. You can check. The concealer's a little tacky. I'm going to set just to make sure it doesn't crease with the RMS on powder. Can't live without it. I mean, I can, but you know. Is it a life worth living? I'm being melodramatic, you guys. Don't take me seriously. We've got the concealer, we've got the powder foundation, and now I'm going to put on some eyeliner. I'm gonna use the Air Perez Jojoba Eye Pencil. I was inspired by a really neutral face and a bold red lip. Oh, so that's where I'm going. I'm gonna do a little bit of a wing on the lid, because you know me. It's kind of what I like to do. That was weird. Next question, how do your friends react when you tell them you only use green beauty products? Um, hmm, I live in the Bay Area. We're in a bit of a bubble. So a lot of people here when I tell them about it, they'll go, oh, cool, what are your brands? A lot of people here knew about it. That said, I still work with several people who are die hard conventional beauty people. When I tell them, I don't really tell people. I'm not like, hey, I'm Brittany, nice to meet you. I use green beauty, what's up, let's talk about it. Usually it just will come up in conversation. Nine times out of 10, it'll happen because they'll go, what eyeliner is that? And then I'll tell them and they'll go, I've never heard about that. And so I get into it. Usually the reaction, and not a lot of people that are my close friends are really wanting to spend the additional mental energy it's just not as important to them. I, I do have one friend in particular who hoarded Sephora stuff and I am always talking to her and I'll go check out this lip gloss, check this thing out, check this thing out. And there was one in particular, I think it was actually an Alima Pure lip tint. It was in color Dahlia and I was showing it to her and she goes, that looks really good. I have this Dior sample I really like and I was like, okay, cool. Well, this is only $14 or something like that. So it started kind of opening her eyes and she bought the RMS setting powder too and she was wowed by it. Usually it comes across like like how passionate I am about it. Going into even amount. Give me a minute. There you go. Because I am not sure if I put those on evenly, I'm going to use the little sponge on the other side of the Vapor Mesmerize eyeliner. I'm going to smudge and smudge and smudge and smudge and smudge. This is my trick for when I can't get a perfect line because I'm talking. I think it's really a nice look. I saw somebody in a meeting the other day. She had a lot of severe lines on her face and she was probably, I'm really bad with age you guys, but um, I want to say she was probably in her mid to late 40s. But she looked older than that because she had a lot of powder. She had beautiful features. It was covered up by a lot of extra powder and a very severe brow and a very severe line eyeline. I'm not kidding you. I was, uh, something that's happened since I started doing this channel, I was looking at her and I was like, okay, I would use the Alima Pure Concealer on that. I would probably do Start making people over in my head and not even making them over to change them, but just enhancements that I've learned. So if I'm looking at you, then I'm making you over. <laughs> it just goes back to the whole like smudging it out really does soften that line and I find it to be a bit more flattering overall. Eyeliner is on. I get to the next questione. Birch box. Clean Beauty Box, will you try it? So a lot of the products in there I have already tried. I hope they kind of come up with another one. I would love to give it a try, but I'm not gonna try what I've already tried and reviewed on the channel, unfortunately, at this point. I'm totally open to the next round. I would actually love to get their box. Love that they're doing it too, by the way. Ooh, here's a good one from Leslie Lai. Hey, Leslie. You bring it out in me, Leslie. You bring it out in me. 
how often do you declutter? Also, may we see your collection video? Not sure what a collection video is. I'm guessing it's just sort of like seeing what is in the vanity. Yes, I have actually received that question a couple of times. Kind of getting there. I'm a little wary. It, I don't know. Anyway, I have, I always forget what I've done on my face when I talk to you guys. I'm gonna do mascara and then I'm gonna do bronzer and I'm gonna use the bronzer for the eyeshadow and then I'm gonna do the lip, the lip, and then I'm gonna be done. Okay, so how do I declutter? I bought, I had no idea that every other beauty YouTuber and blogger did this, but evidently it's a thing. Ikea has this furniture that you can get and it's for office and has multiple drawers and you can get pieces from the container store to organize accordingly. Because I have yearly reviews and 2019 updates for a lot of the products that I use, using the Honest Beauty Mascara right now with the primer. But because I use these products over and over again and need them for reference, I keep them in here and I rarely declutter, I just put things in specific places, which goes to your first question. But I do that by category. So I have foundations in one plastic container. I have BB cream. I have these beakers. I don't know. I had this whole thing where I was gonna start photographing beakers on my Instagram and I did it twice and I got bored with it. <laughs> but they make very good storage solutions. So I have beakers. One is filled with all my eye pencils. One is filled with random stuff. And then the other one has a ton of brushes in it. I also have all these catch-all dishes. Some are actually from, this is a random aside, but my dad, he gives me all of these fun little wooden dishes that I use as catch-alls for makeup and, you know, here and there for jewelry and stuff like that. So I use those to keep some favorites front and center because I find that if it's not in front of your face, you'll forget about it. As I do new videos, I like to resurface a bunch of different products and um, then I put another round of them underneath to their appropriate places and I just sort of like refresh and reorganize, refresh and reorganize. This is the movement, this is the dance, huh? Huh? That's kind of how I do it. I guess I don't declutter. I just rotate and refresh. Rotate and refresh. Situation. See how great this mascara is, by the way? Blue is making the weirdest noises lately. I've only had her now for six months and she is really coming into her own. I think it takes time for them to sort of show their true personality. Plus she was just under two when I got her. Now she's only two and a half, so a lot of fun times. Well, fun times to come, I'm sure. Thank you so much for that question. And now my mascara is on, yay. What am I doing next? Right, so I'm gonna do bronzer. Next comes bronzer. I'm working on not hunching over. Obviously, I still have a lot of work to do there. Great. Do you listen to music when putting on makeup? I actually used to listen to podcasts. I'm big into podcasts. The current favorite is The Dropout, but I've listened to so many wellness podcasts. I listen to a lot of like uh, nutrition podcasts. I love the biohacking podcast. They can get a little much to kind of like, I need an LED light. I need a biomat. I need to do grounding. Like there's all this stuff. I have started listening to The Dropout, which is all about Elizabeth Holmes from Theranos. Do you guys know? about it? Have you listened to it? So good. A ton of different podcasts that I love. So, and if you guys have any great podcasts, by the way, good question. Thank you. If you know of any really solid podcasts or ideally like non-toxic living, things like that, I kind of struggle with that topic. There's nothing amazing out there that I've found yet. Am I missing something? Tell me. Let me know. Thanks. But often now I kind of don't listen to my podcast here because I'm talking to you and I'd rather talk to you. I would because I can listen to the podcast on the treadmill, you know. Before I do my bronzer, one more. There's a lot. Uh, oof. What's the best beauty eye cream you've tried? Ooh. <laughs> the best? They're not really that great. Um, I am gonna get the Kahina Giving Beauty Argan Oil, no eye mask, I don't know. I'm getting something from them for under eye. Uh, I mentioned the 100% pure. I like this again. You guys already heard me kind of give my spiel on it. I don't have a best one. Uh, I've been so focused too on makeup that skincare here and there gets to kind of bubble up. I haven't tried their eye cream, but I do really love the Osea, Osea, Osea? Osea? I'm just gonna say Osea, you guys will correct me because you're good at that. Hydrating face oil, it was in my, my routine videos. I think it was the PM routine. 
and I loved their formula. It worked really well for me. I think that that's something I would try an eye cream out in. I don't know, I've got a couple I wanna try. Mad Hippie probably has one. You guys have been talking a lot about Mad Hippie and those are way better price points. So maybe I'll try Mad Hippie. I'll have a couple more that I can speak to a bit more intelligently than what I currently am and I can give you a better answer for that question. Right now it's like, I don't have a favorite. I'm not wowed by any of the eye creams. Oh. Do you have any recos for sunless tanner? Yeah, I do, but before, I used the Well People Baked Bio Bronzer and Natural Tan for my bronzing. That's great. And now I'm using it as an eyeshadow, as a cam. I do this a lot with bronzer. I kind of love the um, warmth on the eye and it doesn't look like my face is just one color when I do this either. It just adds a little warmth, a little bit of a dimension, and I'm not like cutting a crease or anything. It's just easy, easy peasy. Finishing touches. All right, sunless tanner. Why don't I tell you about the sunless tanner? I'm going to apply an Alima Pure Shocking. I know, I'm into it right now. I'm really feeling what they've got. It's the Velvet Lipstick and it's in color Olivia. Check this out. By the way, nice heavy packaging here. Are you kidding me with this? No, I'm not. I'm talking like I'm a lipstick. So, pretty simple application overall. And then I'm gonna put this on, so I don't know if I can talk and then put that, we'll find out. Let's do it. Sunless tanner, that's a quick and easy answer. Yeah, I can't talk and do it. I'm just gonna leave it like that. I like the Suntegrity Sunless Tanner. I also really appreciate that brand. Asked them a bunch of different questions. I've reviewed it on the channel, by the way. They were so transparent with me. They told me what lab they work with. Amazing. Yes, it's still gonna have that smell. It just does. It goes on a little thick, but rub it in. My skin loves it, and I love using it, especially when we're about to get to spring, but we're not right there. So that's my number one favorite right now. Uh, I don't like the Kula ones, by the way. I think I have a review on that too. Speaking of having other reviews, I know that you guys ask that question a lot. I am building the database back on the site so you can search for all of these things, but I also have a everything I've tried page. Just one quick reference. It's broken down by category and I will put that link below on all of the future videos so you'll see it there. By the way, it's okay if you draw outside your lip line. It's okay. Smudge it and redo. This is a serious contender. Whenever I put on a lipstick like this, I always like to do a liner around it just to kind of clean up the edges. And I use this Dusty Rose, which it, it works, but I've got some other colors finally coming in. I said I would do one more question, so let's do one more question. And there are two one. Okay, two more, two more. The first one is from Janine Collier. Collier? Collier? Hey, Janine. So, really enjoying your channel. Oh my God, thank you so much. Really, actually, I really appreciate you saying that. Do you have a list of cruelty-free clean makeup somewhere that you've tested or maybe not tested yet? I have that link to everything I've ever reviewed. It is not broken out by cruelty-free versus not cruelty-free. I'm not there yet, but the database will be so you can search by cruelty-free or not. And the second answer I wanna give here is there is a website called Cruelty Free Kitty. I will put the link to the website below. If you don't know the person who did it, I love them and I love what they're doing, so check it out. And then the final question for today is from Millie Alvarez. I would like to know if there are influencers, YouTubers, or even celebrities in the green beauty community that you follow. Yeah, so I love this question. There is really no one celeb or multiple celebrities that I follow. Instead, what I end up doing is I will set Google alerts for myself. I have one for clean beauty. I have one for green beauty. I have one for, I don't know, there's like five of them, but I think if you just wanna get started, those are two that you can use and set those Google alerts and just have them come in once a week and you can kind of do a quick review. Instagram for me is a hugely helpful resource to find green beauty bloggers, influencers, and celebrities. I know Emma Watson has done a couple of things in the past with green beauty and clean beauty and sustainable fashion. She's amazing, Hermione forever. You know what else? If you get onto Instagram and you start following people like Katie Denno, she is a makeup artist that uses only clean green beauty products, I believe, or at least she uses primarily those things. She has a YouTube channel as well. Great for application tips, really good for application tips actually. She will talk about the different celebrities that she has done makeup on and so that might kind of lead you down a different wormhole where you can keep going and checking out who's using what and yeah, that's pretty much it but there's plenty of information out there. Personally, I just keep absorbing all of this information so I have my favorites but I don't 
religiously watch them. I do, however, always, always, always look at my Google alerts and I'm always on Instagram anyway, just trying to find new products and resources. Okay, that's all I have for this round of Q&A slash get ready with me slash first impressions slash my cat's insane. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sending those questions in. I will be asking again soon. And thanks for the feedback on these types of videos because I love them too. And I'm so happy you love them. It's like a whole lot of love. You know what I mean? That's it. I'll see you guys right back here real soon. Until then, uh, bye.